This is a very short video on demonstrating how to hand in lab one or any of the labs. Uh, the key is that the labs need to be handed into two separate places, one on the CS Unix server and the other one in the eLearns Dropbox. So the topics of this video will first take a look at how to save your lab on CS Unix. We're going to need to deal with the table of contents file, make sure it's updated. We're going to have to have a lab one folder and we're going to make sure that all the lab one relevant files and images are in there. Then we're going to use the Chrome browser to make sure that we can see lab one on a browser. Next, um, we're going to uh, submit the lab one to the Dropbox. Now, just for the Dropbox, uh, we're going to zip the file up, all, all the associated files with Lab1, into one file, which is going to be named this. Start off with the name of the lab, all in lowercase, your first name, your last name, and your student number. Make sure you have the hyphens separating everything. We're going to load this single file up to the eLearns Dropbox. So let's get started. I finished my lab. I have it on the D drive. So we're just going to have one last look at it before we send it to these two places. Is This is my lab one folder and inside it, it has the lab one and this is my table of contents folder and inside it, it's got my table of contents. So with respect to my lab, you're going to have a start file and always name your start file index.html. And then you're going to have subdirectories and images will always be there. And you'll put your various images inside the images directory. So if I double click on my index.html file, there you can see my lab. It's looking really good. Um, everything seems to be what I want. So I'm ready to hand it in. Next, I just want to double check my table of contents file, make sure it's correct. So I go into that folder and it looks there's the start file for it and if i take a look at that in notepad plus plus this is my uh, file and it looks correct now it's really important to just say lab one in there and make it in lower case uh, cs unix is case dependent and a lot of people get fouled up with spelling because they use a capital l instead of a lower case l so if you always just name things that go to cs unix in lower case all file names, all subdirectories, you'll be a lot happier. Uh, the pound sign is just used as a temporary filler for the current page. So this is fine. It looks like I, I'm ready to go. Just before we uh, open up WinSCP, um, here's where you're working right there on your local laptop or the lab computer. And the CS Unix server, uh, your account's got three sections. The home, which is what we land in upon logging in, it's kind of no man's land. We're never going to put any files in there. The public area are HTML files that you want people to be able to see who don't have to give you a password first. And the private area is where we're going to put our index.html file, which is our table of contents, and then all our labs. So in this course, we're not really putting anything in the first two subdirectories. Uh, and all of our labs and our table of contents are going to go into the private directory. The reason for that is we don't want other people to see our labs. Okay, it's time to log in using WinSCP. So I call up WinSCP, go to the new site right, right at the top, uh, type in the name of the computer you want to log into, csunix.mohawkcollege.ca. And for you, you type in your student number there. For me, I type in my last name. And you type your password. If you've got your password correct, which um, you've changed it, in the lab you should get in now on the right side here where my cursor is this is CS Unix on the left side I'm gonna to go to the D Drive where my lab is and I'm gonna go in this subdirectory called Dave and here's my table of contents in my lab I'll deal with my table of contents first so I'll double click on my table of contents so this is my table of contents on my local computer and then if I go to the CS Unix side, this is no man's land, the blue area. If I double click, I'm in the web area and I've got some files in there. And then if I double click on private, I'm in that yellow area. 
Now, this private area will probably have a default index.html there. We're going to override that with ours. To, to move files, you just slide them across. And th the table of contents has now been successfully moved to CS Unix. Now, I also need a subdirectory for each one of my labs on CS Unix. And make sure you're in lowercase when you're on CS Unix. Uh, so there's where I'm going to put my lab one, and I'll make one more for my lab two. If you want, you can go and make all six labs. Now, I'm ready to now put my lab one in the lab one folder. So if I double click on the lab one folder, um, I'm ready on the CS Unix side. And if I go to the other side here and I go into my local machines lab one, these are the two files that I need to slide over. So there's the peaches file and then the peaches image is actually in the images directory and so now i've successfully loaded my lab one and the table of contents file onto cs unix next we're going to go into chrome and verify that they're there okay i'm in chrome right now and often you want to remove your cache. These are local files that help Chrome serve faster because they save files, you've, sites you've been to before on your local drive. If you uh, want to delete, and it's a good idea to delete your local cache, um, double click in the top right corner on these three dots, these vertical dots, then choose history, then choose history again, and then come over and choose the clear browsing history. Then change this to all time and say clear data. Now, this is important because sometimes uh, you've been to your site before and it's not going to ask you to authenticate and you want to be asked to authenticate. So I'm just going to exit out of here. Uh, I've deleted my cache. I'm going into Chrome now. And what I do is type in this URL. Okay, and um, now when you type in your student number, it's the tilde and then your student number. Now for me, I have to type my name in here and you type in private. So it's critical. I will be typing that in, except I'll be using your student number. And when I do that, your authentication window needs to come up at which point you type in your student number again and then this will be your birth date with your year first then your month then your day and if you get your password correct your table of contents comes up and then you can click on your lab one and your lab one comes up this is how you successfully hand in lab one to CS Unix Next, let's take a look at handing Lab 1 into the Dropbox on eLearn. Okay, I'm now in the eLearn, and under Assessment, you see Dropbox. When you click on it, you see where the files uh, are going to have to be uploaded to. These subdirectories are actually little Dropboxes. So I'm going to be submitting my lab to this Lab 1. Uh, first of all, before that, I'll just minimize this. I go into my D drive and I go to my lab area. Now this table of contents, you don't need it at all for the Dropbox. It was only for CS Unix. So the lab one directory, as you remember, this is my, just double checking that it's correct. It's my, my lab. And um, the next thing is my picture of my images. So I'm all set. Uh, I go back to the subdirectory name, I highlight it, right click, go to send to, and click on the compressed zip folder. What that does is it makes one file that has all of your files to do with lab one and anything that appeared below that recursively, and it made one file. So now what you do is you rename that file, and you put your, your, your first name, then your last name, then your student number. And this zip file is the one you're going to be handing in. It's a single file that can be unzipped by the instructor. And that's done just by right-clicking on it and going extract all. But 
you don't hand in the individual files to the Dropbox, just the single file which you've named like this. Okay, so now we go back to eLearn and we click on Lab 1 and there's a button here called Add a File. We click on that Add a File. We go to My Computer. Now you, you can, if you want, just slide your um, zip file right into this dashed box or you can click on the Upload button and find it on the D drive and just select that zip file and say open and then press add. And that's how you add the zip file which contains all your files, pictures, your start file to the Dropbox. I hope this video helped. Thanks for watching.